Moin Moin and welcome. My name is Niklas, I work at Shopware and today I want to talk to you about the major release 6.7. This video has a state of knowledge that is the January 30th, 2025. So if you watch this video much later, then there might be or will be more current information, just so you know what state of information we have here. What is this video about? I already told you that it is about the major release that is about to happen. Um, I want to share the timeline with you. So what happens when? I want to share with you what is changing roughly because it's very early and uh, also why you want to upgrade or why you want your customers to upgrade depending on your situation of course then why you should make use of the release candidate phase. I will tell you what that is a little bit later on and where to get more information, how to get involved. The timeline for this whole thing is like this. At the beginning of February 2025, there is the last scheduled 6.6 .6 release. So um, after that, there will only be like, you know, the typical security fixes, but it's the last planned release. And Shopware 6.6 will go into extended support. More on that later. Also, at the beginning of February 2025, the preparations for 6.7 start. What that means, I will explain in a moment. Then on March 17th, 2025, we plan to release the RC1, the release candidate one for Shopware 6.7. So this is the version of the next major version where we say, hey, take this. Is this okay? If nobody complains, we release it. That's the plan. On uh, May 14th, then 2025, this will be the official release date for Shopware 6.7. This is the plan right now. That does not mean that it happens this way. It depends on what happens during the RC phase, before the RC phase, what feedback you give us and how we work with it. Let me show you a quick introduction of uh, Alvaro. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me. I am Alvaro, and I am the technical delivery manager for the upcoming Shopware 6.7 major release. My role is all about making sure that the transition to 6.7 is as smooth as possible for our developers and merchants. I've been working closely with our teams to understand the changes, the challenges that this release is bringing, and to communicate them clearly to our community. So that's Alvaro, our Shopware release manager. The question is, what, what is this preparation phase, right? Right. Preparation means that the first week of February, the trunk transitions to 6.7. So we are allowing breaking changes happening. And then deprecated features are going to be removed. And we have time until March 17, in which the first release candidate is going live. So that's what preparation actually means. We already talked briefly about what is a release candidate. A release candidate is just a state of the shopware of the code of the shopware, a state of the software of the code where we say, hey, is this okay? Can we ship this to you as a release? Basically something that you can test on and you should test it because you are doing amazing work. You're doing a lot of implementation, a lot of extensions for shopware, and we can't possibly test for any and every scenario that is out there. If you already test before the RC is happening, right? If I'm doing the trunk phase, so to say, then it's even better because you basically prevent a second RC from happening and things move quicker. The next question would be how to use the release candidate. And I asked Alvaro exactly that question. We would like to get feedback from the community using this first release candidate because we have around eight weeks between March 17th and May 14th in which our intention is that no more release candidates or that we don't have a significant amount of release candidates going on between the first one and the official release but at least we can try to fix any bugs that are coming in or any feedback that we believe makes sense and that we can adjust over time with this preparation window time. And now the big question is, of course, what areas are affected in this major release and what areas will be breaking? And that's also something that I discussed with Alvaro. 
The major topic of 6.7 is accessibility. As we align with the European Accessibility Act, we have been making significant improvements to make sure that we have an inclusive shopping experience, such as updating templates, adjusting font sizes, or ensuring semantic HTML. And these changes might require adjustments to your themes and plugins to ensure compliance. The breaking changes in Shopware, a lot of this is just because of the accessibility topic from the EU. And most of you know about this already, or at least should know about this. Because yes, there are breaking changes in Shopware. But if you have an extension or a theme in a store or anything like this, and everything works, it can still be the case that your shop itself is not fulfilling the requirements of the Accessibility Act from the EU because maybe you have overwritten the colors and now the contrast is not high enough. Things like that can happen. So you need to make sure to check your themes, check your shop, check your extensions independently from anything shopware if the accessibility requirements are fulfilled. That's important. We plan on creating a guide for this, but even that is not a replacement for a legal counsel. Make sure that your stuff is fulfilling these requirements, which means the question is 6.7 a drop and done for accessibility. Alvaro had this to say. Well, these changes require that you need to adjust your themes and plugins to make sure that that you have your your shop, your store in compliance. So if you are on Shopware 6.6, Accessibility improvements will be backported, but hidden behind the accessibility tweaks feature flag. So this is not about just compliance and you can find more details in the shopboard accessibility documentation. We will get in a second to the part where Alvaro talked about 6.6. .6. Where to look for breaking changes, I already told you in the upgrade MD. The upgrade MD is also on GitHub and there now already is a lot of stuff in there that will break immediately as soon as we split the branch F off from the trunk. But over the time up to the RC, there will also be breaking changes added. We have more tools information planned or in the pipeline to make your life easier. But as I said in the beginning, this is an early video and there will be more information after. Let's get into the 6.6 .6 topic and why upgrade? Why upgrade to 6.7? That, that's a big question. All accessibility changes will be backported to 6.6. .6. A lot of them already are. And these changes are accessible behind a feature flag. And this feature flag, uh, it's also in the documentation. I won't go into this in this video, just make you aware of it. This feature flag, as soon as you activate it, will also activate breaking changes. For extension developers, this means uh, this means that that they need also to test with 6.6 .6 and the feature flags. And for everyone that is creating shops, this means that also with 6.6, .6, you get the benefits. You don't need to update to 6.7 right away. You can do it on 6.6 .6 and just implement the accessibility topic. That said, when you look at an existing shop, Assess if it is easier to upgrade directly because you still ha you now have to deal with breaking changes. Take a look at it, test if it's easier to just directly upgrade to 6.7 and not have the hassle uh, next year, right? Because then is the point where you need to move away from 6.6 because of the extended support model that we have. Now, there is no real reason to upgrade right now, as I said. There is accessibility and getting or then selling new features over the year. We are in the unique situation with this major upgrade that there is no feature, which is normal, but we still have time pressure because of the accessibility issues that come from the EU. Do your own research, right? This is a risk because people can take legal action against you. So make sure you're on the safe side here. Now, as I said, 6.6 .6 will get no more feature updates. And that's also something that I discussed with Alvaro. That's the idea. The um, last scheduled release will be in February and 
from there we have time to prepare the 6.7 release so we have a nice time frame in which we can get ready for that so no new features no new functionality if you want to give us some feedback first i would encourage everyone to join the showboard slack channel hashtag feedback release six underscore seven to exchange insights tips anything for preparing for this may release and then you can discuss in advance if something is a is an actual issue something is a bug and then once you found it once you spotted something that's going on something that's not working on you think it should be make us a concern then please create a github issue in the documentation, the top page basically of the release notes has an has a, a section about the extended support. So there you can make yourself familiar with what version gets which updates. Uh, it's not that complicated. It's basically just the last major is extended support, and the one before that gets still security updates via the plugin. But it's the safe way is to be on the on the most recent version that you that you can master, so to say. Now, why use the RC phase or ideally already the trunk uh, before we release the RC? This is especially important for extension partners, for extension developers. And I talked to Thomas about this. Hello, my name is Thomas Stahl. Um, I'm working here as head of extension partnership and growth. Together with my team, I take care of all our extension partners, the shopper store, and uh, also all other sales channels where we distribute the extensions from our ecosystem. And I'm also responsible for enabling our partners to work on the compatibility to our current shopper uh, 6 versions. So the first question, of course, is, uh, is there a different way to give feedback for extension partners compared to everyone else? Well, at least it's uh, very similar to what was just mentioned, because we want also to streamline the feedback to have it really a kind of um, accessible or in, in, in one direction and handleable from our involved teams. And um, for sure, we, we know that there are some, some direct connections um, between some um, partners and also developers. But it would be really helpful if we could have it on the um, dedicated or named uh, feedback channels because then nothing gets lost, nothing is not um, uh, recognized or something. So we would really appreciate if we could it, uh, have it structured and on the uh, published communication channels. The release candidate is special for extension partners and they should be one of the earliest to try this, to already actually try to work on the trunk version of Shopware, why? Well, first of all, it helps us to really see if there are any issues with our release candidate. So for example, if you wait until the very, very end and you then touch a specific point in our release candidate that not has been touched by anyone else and you experience an issue, we then struggle into something that we maybe need to fix before release again. And all of these plannings um, really, uh, yeah, um, impact our whole uh, release um, planning. So this would be uh, something that we could prevent together. And for sure, um, if you adapt uh, your extensions very, very uh, fast to the new shopware version, and there are no following changes related to your extensions uh, with the following release candidates, then you are already done. And um, related to the extensions and the need of the extensions, we need to be aware of that there are some business critical extensions that are main business drivers for customers and where it is very important to have them available as soon as possible so that the merchants can also drive their update path after a final release. And that's basically all information on the release itself for this video there is uh, the question where to get more information and how to get feedback. And feedback is relatively easy. Go to slack.shopware.com and go to the feedback channel, sign up for the newsletter, go to the review bazaar. There will be another review bazaar on the release candidate at least. And the main source of truth, I already mentioned that, is the upgrade MD. So this is where you get the most info 
And the shopware block is another thing to keep an eye on. And that's all the feedback slash information thing. So feedback in Slack, information in Slack, information on the block, information in the upgrade MD, feedback and information on the uh, review bazaar. And that's your little feedback information package. Now I have some closing words from Thomas, why it is a good idea to test early. In the past, we had this uh, point of that we needed to release a kind of minor very fast after the major release because we then experienced some stuff. And I think having more people working on the release candidate reduces this risk a little bit because we have more people that test and um, work with the release candidate and could help us to really identify this kind of stuff before a major release. New merchants, they also mostly go with the newest major version and don't don't download 6.5 uh, or 6.6 anymore. So if you want to be attractive for new possible merchants, then this is also a topic where you, why you should adapt is, uh, very fast. Yeah. And with that said, thanks for watching. Stay tuned. Let's make this the best major release Shopware ever had.